Remember in my first year video I said I didn't regret going to university? I do not have any regrets of the, the course that I chose, the path that I chose. <laughs> I think that opinion has changed. Even if she go away, even if she go away, I'm a classic man. Welcome back to my channel, it is your boy Manny. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my second year experience. You guys, this could potentially be a rant video. I might lose my temper in this video because this year was a calamity. It was trash. It was a shamble. I feel like the whole nation went through this thing because I was on Twitter seeing people talking about how stressed they are about university, how they regret going to university. Someone tweeted, I'm in university to finish what I started. I fell the fuck off. I was like, listen, this is, that, that is the dream though. Let me start off with the academic year as a whole. The academic year for me went by so quickly but felt so slow. So let me explain what I mean. So if you're talking about the actual time, from September to May, it went by like a breeze. But with that, there was a lot of stress, the workload doubled, and it felt like I had done second year three times. That's how it actually felt for me. So I'm just wondering how final year is going to go, because if this is second year, <laughs> final year, Lord, God, me, Lord Jesus, because I don't know how it's going to go. I don't know. I literally have, I have no idea how it's going to go. The workload. When I tell you I wasn't ready, I was not prepared, I was not ready for what was to come. I had someone in my life who told me second year was not going to be easy. But boy, was I not ready for that. I, I, I was like, okay, it's not going to be easy, I understand. But I was not ready for what was to come. <laughs> I don't think I said this in my first year video, but the average word count that we had for our assignment was 1,500 words. We had a few 1,200 words and we had one or two 2,000 word um, essays and reports but second year was full of reports 3,000 word reports as I said time management is so important please ladies don't go to university to be doing housewives of half a shit housewife of Leicester housewife of DMU yes you could find a potential husband in university but that should not be your main focus don't be cooking pots of jollof rice whilst you are starving whilst you've got assignments waiting for you at the door no fellas my boys, don't be using your student finance to be taking your part-time girl to the shard. Whilst you know very well that's not part of the tax bracket, that is not even something that you can afford, please. Yes, at the right time, you'll find the right bay. If that's the right bay, she will understand that you are a uni student. You ain't got the finance to be doing that. It's so funny to me that before university, I preferred assignments over exams. But once I experienced what assignments was really about in first and second year, <laughs> that opinion changed real quick. I think I prefer exams over assignments because I feel like we got a lot of help about exams in terms of like what topics were to come up and it's, it's, uh, it was easy to revise on, on what you know was going to come up. What I will say made the assignments even worse is my next point which is the teaching. The teaching was a mess. The teaching was a shambles. I think the teachers have a set amount of hours they can teach in the whole academic year. When I tell you I don't think we even got half the hours worth of proper teaching it's not a lie. I'm not lying to you guys. We had four to five lecturers, teachers, whatever you want to call it. Only one, and he knows who he is, only one was useful. He was our saviour of this academic year. If it was not for him, I would have failed all these assignments. This man was teaching us his module and teaching us the other, lady, uh, the other people's module. And he is the youngest of them all. Like He is in his late 20s. Like How is someone who is younger than you? How does he have more knowledge? How does he know more than you guys? Whilst you guys are claim that you know what you're doing, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what the fuck you're doing. As I said in my first year video, semester A was a flawless semester. We had amazing teachers, we were getting good grades as a class, but semester B, semester B, that's where it went downhill. We were getting teachers who were claiming that they were lecturers or they were tutors, but they were actually cover teachers. And I thought, oh, the summertime we used to recruit new lecturers, new tutors, whatever. No. It continued for the whole of second year. I just don't know if the, if you're just broke. But I was like, what is this? What is this? What's this? Like, <laughs> I can't. Attending lectures. Did I attend lectures? Did I think it was necessary? My opinion in the first year video still stands. Like, I attended, I would say nearly three quarters of the lectures. I'm not proud to say that I missed lectures. But at the same time, travel is not cheap. To go from my house to where I study, 
it's 20 pounds a day 20 pounds plus a day we had two days worth of lectures so that is 40 pounds a week so i'm spending 160 pounds a week on travel just to get there is either there's a teacher throwing shade there's another teacher who is reading off the board there's another teacher having a breakdown because she just realized that she's a rubbish teacher or someone who's never in the only reason i was attending was for the one that was useful or for the fact that i wanted to see my friends because this year this year was a sham what helped me get through this year was the powerpoint and study.com the only time i actually used study.com was for my exams um that i had in may i only had one exam in may that is what really helps me with the exam because the revision notes they were just uploading stuff for the sake of it because they were not it was not useful my advice to you is when you start the year attend all lectures but also observe and see which one is useful do you really have to attend it if you're lucky enough to have um videos of the lectures or to have powerpoints use those if you don't know what to do about the lectures please attend don't say manny told you not to attend manny said attend if it's useful i don't want to come and sit here and be oh it's useful oh it's this well it's a lie it depends on the uni and it also depends on the teaching not every uni is the same so books do you have to buy books is it necessary i will say before you think about buying a book there are many options for you i got this book only because it was like 99p on ebay it was a used book i was like i'm not gonna buy a book i'm gonna throw away in a year's time so i got this book by bill curtin i'll put the name of it on the screen and everything it's called brilliant dissertation what you need to know and how to do it I had a mini dissertation this year, so it really did help me and benefit me. I know it's going to help me even more for final year because that's why I'm going to do the heavy dissertation. I was not going to spend money on books. Whilst I know it's either available in the library or there's an electronic version online for free. Like, please make sure that you're not wasting your money on books because most times you only need a page from a book to understand a topic. There are some degrees where you will need books but a lot of them are available online you don't necessarily have to go and buy it especially for the full price these books are expensive like this book here the one i showed you is £11.99 but i got it for 99p what a bargain when i saw on ebay i bought it for myself and my friends definitely check online there's gonna be electronic versions on google google is your best friend okay check your school libraries and your local libraries as well that they should definitely have the books that you need because when the uni gives you a reference list most times the books are popular it should be available online or available in the library so definitely check the library was there any drama this year so if you remember there was drama last year but i do have an update for you let me let me clarify something i've not used their real names in the story time i used fake names miguel wasn't with us for second year but greg me and greg had no choice but to get along let me tell you why so for my first group assignment guess who i had to work with so this is a month after, probably a few weeks after I filmed that video, guess who I had to work with? Greg. Ah, uh, watch the story time so it can make sense why I'm, why I'm saying it so dramatically. I had to work with Greg. We, we got a lot, like, we were cordial. We were very cool this year and there was no drama. I won't say there was any drama this year. So my advice to you, as I said in the first year video, as I said in my A-levels video, pick a course and pick a uni that you want. Don't pick something that your family wants. Don't pick something because your friends are going there. Pick it because you know it's going to be useful for you. If you feel like you don't know what you want to do with university, don't rush. There's nothing wrong with you taking a year gap to reflect on what you want to do. I I wish I took a year gap to reflect on what I want to do. I would not have picked the course. The course that I picked, I study, if I didn't mention already, I study business with human resources. Even saying it is tiring. Like, it's useful because I do want to become a businessman. I am doing something that's got to do with me being a businessman already. I'm, I'm doing YouTube. It is a business. Listen, being a YouTuber is not, it's not just you posting a video. You have to know how to do marketing. You need to know how to promote yourself. You need to know how to set up your Google AdSense. You have to know how to convert the money you're making from dollars to pounds. This course is useful, yes. But it's something that I could have studied for free. <sighs> I can't stress it enough to you how stress for university is you need to make sure that the 9k you're gonna have to pay back was worth it at the end of the day you don't want to you don't want to sit down 10 years from now and say i wasted 27 pounds plus they have the audacity to even think about increasing the, the tuition fee like do i think university is worth it i would say university is what you make it. university could potentially be trash for 
someone who does not make the best of it. If you're talking about the teaching itself, is the teaching worth 9k a year? Hell no. For me, I was not even using the teaching to understand what I was doing. I was using YouTube. For breaking the chart, I, I do not know what I hate finance. Anyone that knows me knows that I can't stand finance. Breaking the chart, guess how I learned breaking the chart? I learned it through YouTube. <laughs> through freaking YouTube. My exams, I was revising through study.com. I made an account, used the, the trial, and cancelled the trial the day after my exams. I cancelled that shit. I wish I did an apprenticeship. Point blank, period. Like, for me, because with an apprenticeship, you're getting paid, number one. The money's important. You're getting paid, and number two, you're getting the experience. Now, all these workplaces want is experience. I have got friends who studied very good courses, got very good grades, got two ones in first. But uh, some of them are still unemployed, some of them are in jobs that they don't even enjoy, some of them are still looking for jobs with those grades that they got. Some of them study at the best uni, some of them study the best courses. Uni does not guarantee success. I want to stress this to you people. With what I was taught as a child, without university you will not make it. It's a lie. It's a lie. There's people that are making it without university, there's people that have that chose different real education that has benefited them. What helps me cope with this year slash workload, the first thing I want to say is God. Praying. Anytime I felt like giving up, I was like, Lord, guide me, protect me, help me, because it's too much. It's too much to bear. Like, it's mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally draining. It's draining. I'm not going to lie to you and say it's the best thing. No. No. It's not easy. It's not a walk in the park. I didn't expect it to be a walk in the park. The last thing that helped me was my assignment playlist. I love music. Music really helps me get through the low moments. Music helps me at all times. I created an assignment playlist on Spotify. I think it's got almost 8 to 90 songs on it. From Celine Dion, to obviously Rihanna, to New Edition, Sierra, Michael Jackson. The assignment playlist is on my first um, Spotify account. I will put my name on Spotify and the name of the playlist on the screen below. My friends also really helped me. Shout out to Joy, shout out to Adina, shout out to Chloe, Charlie, Dennis, Jack. It's so important that you make friends and not just friends but genuine friendship. Don't just make friends for you want to abuse them. Make friends that you know that you can, can you will communicate with them in 10 years time. I obviously, not everything is promised. You don't know the future. Make friends with the aim of wanting to grow together of wanting to even continue the friendship after you graduate and everything don't just make friends and then dump them when you're done don't be the one that's antisocial don't be the one that doesn't want to make friends that doesn't want to be alone because there are times where you're going to need them you need a friend to remind you oh my god you've got a deadline next week don't forget to start this assignment you need a friend to give you the support that you need ask Joyce and Adina how many times I, want I said I want to drop out I was ready I was ready. I was like, I'd rather drop out and limit the cost of this thing. Is, is it really worth it? Like, I was really going through a lot mentally, but thanks to my my uni friends, who are my actual friends. I don't, I call them uni friends that you know, like I know them for uni, but they're actually my friends. Like they are my close friends, and I love them so much. Like sometimes our friends can know more than the lecturers. Like I'm like, how oh, do you know that? But another thing that helps me, I would say, is commuting. I feel like if I was to stay in my own place or. Stay, or stay on campus or whatever, I would not really be the happy. I feel like I would actually feel so low. Like, but sometimes from being at home, it's good because you got you got familiar faces that you're used to. You got people that you love that can encourage you. Sometimes my favorite moment, I would say, is when someone spotted me. I was like, "I need to cast money." I was shook. I was not ready. <laughs> Let me tell you the story. So it was one lunchtime, and I was with my my group of friends from my course. And there was a table in front of me where a girl and a guy were sitting at. And I could see that they kept staring at me. So I was very self-conscious because like, am I eating in a weird way? Like, why am I being standing like this? So, <laughs> so I got out and went to the toilet after I finished eating to wash my hands. And when I came out, the two that were sitting in front of me were standing by the elevator about to go to their lessons. So I was just, I, I, I did not pay attention to that. I was walking and then the girl called me and was like, do you have a YouTube channel? I was like, yes. And so I had the class of money, I was like, yes! I was like, oh my god! <laughs> Apart from the people in my class, I did not think anyone would know that I did YouTube. So I was like, wow. But the thing about me is that that situation made me realize I'm very socially awkward. Like, from that day onwards, I didn't know how to approach her. Like, when she's walking past me, like, do I say hi? Do I keep on walking? So whilst I'm thinking about it, the person's with the girl and the guy have really gone past. And my friend, my friend was like, Manny, can you learn how to say hi to people, please? I was having thoughts in my head that I did not really. I don't know why I was overthinking. So, 
if you're watching this and you think I was being rude to you, please, I was not being rude to you. It takes a lot for me to get comfortable with people, you know, so it's just how I am. I, I'm, I wasn't being rude, I wasn't being stuck up. Okay, I just know what to say. But I do, thank, thank you very much for approaching me. If you recognise me in person, don't be afraid to say hi to me, but don't, don't, don't tap me too hard and scare me like, I get shook real quick, okay? I'm not gonna lie to you, I get shook real quick. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them down below. If you also have your own experience you wanna share, comment down below as well. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And as I always say, don't forget to always do you and be unapologetic.